You're listening to Around the Perimeter's exclusive interview with film club president Melissa Simpson, who's also the director of Bittersweet, one of the films that will be shown in the club's film festival on April 6th in the Jim Cherry Lecture Hall on the Clarkson campus. From the newsroom here on Clarkson campus in Clarkson, Georgia, this is a special edition of Around the Perimeter. I'm Ben Abrams, the executive editor of the Collegian newspaper here for Georgia State's Perimeter College. And today I'm joined by a special guest. I'm joined by Melissa Simpson. She is the president of the film club here on the campus. And uh, she's uh, come by to uh, talk about the upcoming film festival, which will be happening uh, next Wednesday at 5 p.m. in the uh, Jim Cherry Auditorium. She also uh, has a film that will be in the uh, film festival herself, so uh, she just come to talk about that and just talk about the film club and just uh, how she got there. So how's it going, Melissa? Everything's great. Thank you for having me here. Uh, thank you for making some time out to be here. I'm really glad to be out here. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of good things about the film club and the film festival. I know uh, last year, you know, we were uh, wanting to uh, do something like this, especially getting to uh, talk to some people who be involved in here, so... Uh, you know, when you uh, reached about the film club, I was just really happy because, you know, one, we didn't miss it. And two, getting a chance to be able to talk to some people and just see what's uh, really going on with this thing. So really do appreciate that. Not a problem. And again, you know, thank you for having me here. Um, definitely. I'm excited about the festival and we have several films that are in the lineup. And we are going to be judging in categories of cinematography, uh, acting, um, the narrative convention, uh, and, um, definitely, uh, we'll have three different judges. They, I believe most of them used to be students here at, uh, GSU Perimeter College. And, um, so I'm excited to have them out. And also with the judging, we're going to have the audience favorite. So you guys get to pick what you like as far as which movies as well. All right, thanks. And uh, so for anyone who's new to the film festival, um, let me just explain a little bit of how it worked and everything. So um, what is it about the film festival that, you know, just makes it so great? And, you know, why should students come out to see this? Well, because first off, it's uh, seeing what other students have created. It's actually students who um, not all are in the film club, but majority are. And what we do in the film club. And um, it's, it's us, you know, writing scripts, actually working together to um, have a production, uh, casting calls, uh, and whatnot. And then, you know, after we, we film everything, we get into the production mode. Matter of fact, my film that uh, is going to be at uh, the Student Film Fest, which is called Bittersweet, um, basically... You know, that semester, last semester, we took so many different students that were in the club and everybody got into groups and we, you know, wrote scripts and all just uh, created, created our own movies. And so this is how Bittersweet came to being. All right, cool. And um, like I said, I actually, uh, you know, I got to saw a uh, small sample of that film, Bittersweet, um, you know, looked really good. Thank um, you. Like I said, we'll be uh, having it up on the uh, school site and on the YouTube page uh, in the next coming days here. Now, I actually wanted to ask about um, about the movie. Now, uh, the one thing about uh, Bittersweet is that it shows, you know, a tragic tale of, uh, of an abusive relationship. So, uh, you know, when you were uh, writing the script or you got the idea for the story, why did you feel like, you know, this was a story that you needed to tell? Uh, because these are uh, subjects that are taboo and need to get out there. And people need to understand how it's real, and it happens between couples, uh, most definitely. Yeah, and I mean, that is a good point, because it's like you know about it, because, you know, you've heard it in the news, you know, domestic assault all the time, domestic violence all the time. Looking back about maybe around 18 months ago, there was the TMZ released the video of Ray Rice, you know, blatantly knocking out his wife from point blank range and uh at the time you know everyone had outrage over it but uh it does seem like trying about the problem wanting to do something about the problem is like no action or not much action has been taken lately absolutely um something that i've noticed is is it doesn't happen with just celebrities it happens to our brothers it happens to our sisters uh and um there is help out there 
uh, basically, you know, if you go to um, a battered woman shelter, they have social workers out there that definitely help. Um, and also, uh, the film uh, covers the subject of suicide as well. And there are suicide hotlines out there, um, which it's great to have it on your, your refrigerator if you ever need it. Um, anyway, but, but the thing is, is it doesn't just happen to celebrities. It happens to all of us, everyday individuals. And I think those taboo subjects need to be brought into the media and, um, people need to think about them because they very well exist and they very well kill. So, you know, do you think that, uh, making movies like this or even, uh, shows or movies, this subject alone that are this nature, you know, do you feel like that could, uh, bring a lot more awareness to, you know, just how troubling, like, you know, domestic violence is, how much of a problem it is, uh, even here in America, you know, much more than, uh, like news could, or just even the way it's depicted now? Absolutely. Um, there was a song by Eminem that um, the music video was uh, basically Megan Fox and a guy from the old TV series Lost. And uh, it depicted, uh, you know, abusive uh, relationship and uh, violence. And Megan Fox took the money that she made from that and donated it to uh, causes for domestic violence. And I thought that was great. And that makes an impact. And even by me doing Bittersweet, um, I wanted to bring it into the media as well so that others would understand and maybe open their mind to how it, it is relevant today and in our society. Yeah, and uh, you know the crazy thing about that uh, music video was released. There were actually people who were actually offended by that. There were complaints about Eminem releasing that video because it seemed like there was like a misunderstanding in that message. Like you know they were, they were trying to warn about you know the dangers of domestic violence, but somehow it got confused to saying that it might have accidentally promoted it. So, uh, absolutely, I uh, did show the film Bittersweet to uh, um, someone who was older, and they were offended. Not really offended by it, but it disturbed them. Uh, both with a suicidal topic in it and uh, abusive relationship because she has been in that situation. And so it made her feel awkward. And that's understandable. And it's going to affect a lot of people that way, um, unfortunately. Yet at the same time, it evokes a feeling that is important, that does make us aware, wait a minute, this exists. Yeah, and so... Um like I said, what would you say to people who uh, who are offended or would be offended uh, by some of the things that are in this film? You know, people were saying, you know, how could you show suicide? How can you show stuff like that? Because I'm not here to entertain. I'm here to open people's minds. And that's what I'm trying to do with my filmmaking. All right, cool, cool. Um, so uh, one of the other things I was curious about is uh, I noticed that Jordan Shaw, you know, helped you with the film. He helped direct. Uh, she did, yes. Oh, Abs she, okay. Yes, absolutely. Oh, she's actually the vice president of uh, the film club. And she's a great help. She's a great help. And uh, I, wrote, I wrote the script and had her help me with directing it. And she was a big help with uh, directing, you know, people where to put the lights uh, having excellent input uh, with the movie making process. Okay. Well, first off, uh, my apologies for that. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, so she's uh, you know president of the film club. So I just want to vice president, vice president of the film club. So I just want to know. Um, first of all, um, did y'all meet in the film club? And also, you know, what made her you know the right person to help you with this movie? Uh, well, um, we met in the film club um, a few semesters back, and, you know, we've been friends ever since. And, um, you know, we went through C Campus Movie Fest uh, last year, and, uh, you know, we've helped each other during the summer. And um, because she's a good friend, and I see her passion in uh, filmmaking and wanting to be a director, I wanted to give her that opportunity to have director uh, by her name because she deserves it. And that's what I try to do with other film club students is I try to help them with um, what they want to accomplish because sometimes people need direction. And uh, like, for example, uh, we have a film club student who uh, just, you know, said yes to uh, transcribing a movie uh, that... Ed Gutentag, who was here uh, in February, who spoke, um, he's doing his movie uh, on depression. 
And, uh, of course, Trey uh, volunteered. And that's what happens when people get into film club is we meet each other and we make contacts and uh, we help others make those outside contacts. And so it's really beneficial to everyone. And uh, I love all the people that are in film club. One of the things I just want to notice and just, you know, just hearing you know your passion of one to, you know, spread message with, you know, with your talent and everything. So how did you uh, did you uh, find out that you want to have a career in film? Well, um, interesting, interesting question. Um I had never thought about it when I was younger. And uh, I was, as a matter of fact, in the computer field for about 20 years. And um, that is just not for me anymore. Therefore, I was, you know, trying to, I was doing searching. I was doing a lot of soul searching and what I wanted to do in life that made me happy. And that's when I took an intro to film class and met my wonderful advisor and teacher, Elizabeth Lathrop. And uh, through her instruction, I became passionate about it. And it just became easy for me. And it's a difficult path. Yet, I know that with uh, dedication and drive and passion, uh, we can make anything happen. Therefore, I'm working on myself. You're talking about just uh, doing some searching and uh, also just it seems like it's still a journey right now. So, um, absolutely. Just looking uh, ahead of the journey. So, after uh, you know you're finished here and you graduate from Perimeter, um, any idea what's next? Well, I've already started working uh, in the film industry with editing. And um, matter of fact, I recently did an, uh, a cut for Ed Gutentag, who gave a, a, a talk here, and um, you know it's helped me as far as applying for other jobs because I have that footage. Um, and, uh, so I try and try every day to do something, whether it's, you know, editing, whether it's, I'm doing a a wedding this coming weekend. Um, and whether it's even watching YouTube videos on cinematography, photography, and, uh, even script writing. Um, you know, I try to better myself every single day and I think that's what it takes it takes in, in whatever we decide to become uh, in this wonderful life. And it takes us, you know, thinking about who we are and what we want to be and finding what our will is and doing it. You found film after, you know, all this time of searching. So, you know, anyone who's uh, going to film or maybe anyone who's just, you know, new to the campus or just looking for something new, why should they join film club? Well, if they're interested in film, whether it's watching film or making films, um, it's a great place to get to know other people who have the same interest. It's also a great place to learn leadership and um, with understanding the process of creating, uh, having a dream and actually making it happen through concrete work. All right. And then just, uh, you know, my last question here Um, for anyone who, you know, wants to get into film or, you know, that's their dream or has that dream of, you know, being in film or cinematography, in any capacity, what would be your advice to them? Make a film. Do whatever it takes. Write a script. Um, even have your, your friends and family uh, star in it. Um, it may totally suck. However, you've accomplished something. It's one step towards your goal. Yeah, I can understand it. I can just respect that whole idea of just going out there and just doing something. Because uh, even like just working here, you know, like I've been here for two years. And, you know, that time was like even just learning how to do an interview. You know, like if I played like any records of my interview last time, you know, I'm stuttering. I'm tripping over words. Even when I started this, like I'm still, you know, stuttering, tripping words, even my most recent interview. So, you know, I can understand the idea of, you know, just going out there and just getting practice and everything. So... Absolutely. First off, Melissa, just thank you for uh, coming in here and just uh, talking about the film festival and also sharing some stuff about yourself. Um, again, like I said, the uh, film festival is uh, this Wednesday, 5 o'clock p.m. at the uh, Jim Cherry Auditorium, which is uh, right. yeah, it's uh, bottom floor of the library here on the Clarkston campus, or you know, the big building with all the windows in it. Like I said, uh, again, I want to thank you. Uh, best of luck to you in the film festival. And uh, like I said, anytime, uh, you know, just want to come back here and talk, you know, doors always open. 
Well, thank you, Ben. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, everyone, I hope to see you at the Student Film Festival. Yep, I'll be there. All right. I'd like to see you all there, too. All right. That was my interview with Melissa Simpson, the president of the Film Club. Again, the Film Club's Film Festival will be happening on April 6th at 5 p.m. in the Jim Cherry Lecture Hall, the bottom floor of the library under Clarkson Campus. Be sure to check that out. Also want to remind everyone that we have two more episodes of Around the Perimeter this week. One will be another exclusive where I will interview some of the folks up at Dunwoody the Art Club for their exhibit, which will be happening on April 7th at 5 p.m. in the Gallery of the F Building on the Clarkson campus. Also, London Balbosa, Diamond Jefferson, and Lacey Harper will be sitting down for kind of a roundtable discussion about some of the electives that you know may be uh, going away from Perimeter. I'm not sure how many folks know about it. They do want to bring that to light, and they'll be discussing that in the main episode of Around the Perimeter. But anyway, in the meantime, for all of us here at Around the Perimeter, I'm Ben Abrams, again, executive editor for The Collegiate Man, and I want to thank all of you for tuning in. I also, once again, want to thank the listeners sitting down taking questions with us. Until next time, man, be easy. Whatever you do, just stay informed. This exclusive episode of Around the Perimeter was written and produced by Ben Abrams. Around the Perimeter is a special presentation of the Perimeter Podcasting Network from the Collegian at Georgia State's Perimeter College. For more information about the school, you can reach them online at collegiannews.com, as well as their Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram pages. For more podcasts, you can reach them online on their SoundCloud page at soundcloud.com slash GSU Perimeter Pod, or their YouTube channel, Perimeter Pod Net. Hey everyone, it's Ben Abrams, the executive editor from the Collegian and one of the creators of the newly named Perimeter Pod Network. And I'm here just to talk about some of the stuff that will be happening at Perimeter over the next couple of weeks. On uh, April 6th at 5 p.m., the uh, film club will be having its annual film festival over in the Jim Cherry Lecture Center. will be the uh, downstairs library lobby on the Clarkson campus. If you don't know where that is, that is the uh, building with all the glass windows uh, you know, on it right next to the campus cafe. But anyway, uh, like I said, annual film festival. Uh, students will get to participate and vote on which short film they like the best. Go down and check it out myself, and I'm really looking forward to it. Also, on April 7th, the Art Club will be having its annual art exhibit in the gallery of the f building on the clarkson campus this is when you know talented members of the art club will get to showcase the art for you know people to come in to see you know another great event get to showcase good local talent and finally uh, our friends over from the uh, and wellness recreation centers uh you know they gave us some things that they wanted us to pass on to some other folks uh right now until april 27th they got an outdoor intramural soccer league that is going on right now over on the uh, soccer field you know, right next to the parking deck and right next to the football stadium. Uh, that's where, you know, the Lady Jags used to play their ball, uh, you know, before uh, the consolidation happened. But anyway, uh, like I said, just some really good things going on right now. If it's anything like direct basketball league, you're bound to see some good action. So I would say go on over there, check it out. They also got one going on Dunwoody right now. And actually, interesting thing is, is that, you know, when they do the playoffs, they're going to kind of have this World Cup of, of a perimeter thing going on right now where the uh, Clarkson winner will play the Dirty winner for the championship game. Uh, also going on from the uh, Wellness and Rec Center, some fitness classes that uh, will be going on from now until the end of the month. Room CG014 on the Clarkson campus. We have yoga that goes from now until April 27th. Uh, you can catch that every Monday and Wednesday from 11.30 to 12.30 p.m. We also have Aqua Zumba, which will be happening in room CG 1130 on the Clarkson campus. Uh, that'll be going from now until the 28th. You can catch those on Monday and Wednesday from 515 to 615. And Cardio Kickboxing, which will be happening in room CG 0140, the same room as yoga. You can uh, catch that from now until April 28th. And that will be on Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 530 to 6.30 p.m. And finally, for anyone who's uh, maybe looking for 
a relaxing uh, activity they can do, even just to uh, you know get their mind off of classes. They also have a walking program, which will be going on right now uh, until April 22nd. Uh, they have some prizes for uh, anyone who can, uh, you know, walk 10, 15, uh, 30, even 50 miles. So, you know, anyone looking just uh, for an activity that just help them blow off some steam or, you know, get their mind off things or even just to relax. Uh, like I said, this walking program might be a good fit for you. For more information, check out Coach Robert Edwards. He's at downstairs in the G building on the Clarkson campus. Or you can get in touch with Jonetta Kelly at jonetta.kelly at gpc.edu. Again, jonetta.kelly at gpc.edu. All right, so like I said, a lot of great things happening here around the uh, campuses of Perimeter. And uh, just go check them out. And if there's anything that uh, you'd like to let us know, Feel free to reach out to us on our uh, Collegian Facebook page or on our Twitter page and just let us know about some stuff that's happening around the area.